What's going on? It's Javan Johnson here. You're watching episode number 150 of About 10 Minutes. How you feeling? How you doing? So on this episode, I have some footage. I got the opportunity to uh, teach Bible study this past Wednesday. And so I have some footage of that. And I was dealing with the topic of being strong and being courageous in the Lord. So let's go to some of that footage right now. Courageous and strong. Strength and courage. How many people know that it's important for us to be strong and courageous in the Lord? In the power of his might. Not in our own power, but in the power of his might. And one of the things that I really saw was going back to salvation at the foundational level. Because sometimes when we get into things, we have to really go back to the foundation. It's like when you're building a house, when you're building a building, that foundation is crucial. Because if the foundation is not sturdy, if it's not strong, then you can have all this other strong stuff on top of that. But it will crumble down because it does not have the proper support. In order for us to live for Jesus Christ, we have to acknowledge our own shortcomings. We have to realize that we have fallen short of the glory of God. We have to realize that we need a Savior. But Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. So we have to have that faith. We have to repent of our sins and put our faith in Jesus Christ. We have to believe that he truly died on the cross for our sins and rose from the grave. So that's the foundational level. Why that's so important is if we don't have that foundation, if we think this is based on us and our good works and what we do, then we're going to be lost right from the start because we're, we're going to continue in a cycle of thinking, okay, i got to get this done. i got to do this. Now, God has definitely given us, given us an assignment to do. He's given us some things that we have to do, and we're going to get into that in the Word. But if we don't have that foundation and realize that it's all from Jesus Christ from the beginning, then we're going to continue to find ourselves in a cycle of frustration, a cycle of not achieving what it is we want to achieve. So I'm going to go right to verse, um, verse 6 of chapter 31. It says, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. And then let's go to the, the New Testament. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. And it reads, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. How many people know that the enemy is real? We have a real enemy. The thing about it is we got to stand bold and not be afraid of the enemy. we got to use the tools that God has given us in order to combat the enemy. And it's like, you know, one thing people know about me, I enjoy sports. And, uh, you know, what they call March Madness is right around the corner. It's a college NCAA tournament that's coming up. And one of the things that you see with that is you see a lot of what they call upsets. You see some teams who are really unknown, may not have a whole lot of stars, and then they come into the tournament, and it's like, man, where do these teams come from? And one of the things they do is they have a strategy. They have, they have, they watch film on each other, so they'll, they'll watch what the other team is doing. They'll say, okay, this, this person right here, player number one, this is his strength right here. He likes to go to the right hand. He likes to shoot a jump shot. He likes to do these different things. And they'll say, okay, this guy right here, he's a big man. He can't really go to his left, but he loves to go to his right. So we got to force him to his left. So, so what it is is there's a strategy that comes along with that. There's a strategy to where they say, okay, we got to do this. If we want to beat this team right here, we got to have a good game plan. And so when you look at that and how that translates even into this lesson is we got to have a game plan. And God has given us the instructions. He's given us even what to do, but we got to apply it to our lives. And what can happen is on a daily basis, there are so many different things that can be coming for our minds. I mean, we, we see it from television to magazines to, to the phone right here. I mean, there's so much going on on your phone. Like, the Word of God is an incorruptible seed, but if we're not careful, we can start to plant some other seeds in our lives. I mean, television. You got to look at the things you're watching on television. You got to look at the things that you're reading about. You got to look at it and say, okay, does this line up with the Word of God? Does this line up with what the Bible says? If it doesn't line up, I need to renew my mind and I need to get right back on track to make sure that what I say is lined up with the Word of God. So when I'm, when I'm speaking certain things, you know, me, I'm, I'm a Word person, I like to speak the Word. I don't like to just say what's on my mind all the time. Sometimes the enemy can try to throw thoughts into your head. He can try to instill fear in you. But when you have that word and you have that word of God in you, you speak that word and you see it coming to fruition, then you can move forward and you can advance in what God has called you to do. Amen? Okay. Uh, let's go to 1 John chapter 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So one of the things you got to realize is how much God loves us. 
See, the enemy tries to come and he tries to get us in fear. He tries to get us away from understanding God's love and from meditating on God's love because if he can get us back into a corner and thinking about this happening to you when you was five years old, there are all these different things that come into your mind. He can try to, the enemy can try to back you into a corner to think, well, I don't know. I don't know if I should do this. And when we realize how much God loves us, we can take comfort in the fact that, okay, if God has my back, I don't have to be concerned about going up to speak to this person. If God has my back, I don't have to be concerned about whatever task it is uh, he's called me to do. We also need to stay humble and keep learning. Amen. Anybody know that pride comes before a fall? Yeah. That's right. You know, so if we're, proud, if we're proud and we have a proud look, then God resists the pride. And one of the things, when I read that verse and I learned that verse, I was like, okay, I don't want God resisting me. I don't ever want to be in a position where he is going in a different direction from where I'm going. Also, I look at, are my actions glorifying God? You know, we're living epistles. We're living letters. So people are reading us each and every day. So if you're living your life and you see there are certain things that these are entry points for the enemy to get in, then you got to close those entry points. It's just like I, like I was talking about earlier with the basketball coach. When they're, when they're strategizing, they're saying, okay, this dude can't go to his left hand. I know he can't go to his left. So we got to force him to his left. If that's your weakness, then you got to start developing that left hand. you got to go where you can use your left hand and your right hand. Whatever it is, if we seek God and we ask God to give us wisdom and how to handle ourselves in, that, in those areas, God will give us the wisdom. But we got to seek him. we got to ask him. You know, it's easy to just get caught up and say, well, okay, I, I don't want to face that kind of stuff. But we got to face it. If we face it, then God can get us built. He can build us stronger. But if we don't face it and deal with it, then we don't get, you know, we don't get stronger. We stay in, in that same state of mind. There's a lot of teachings going forward that where people are giving their own opinion. You know, people are getting caught up into what's politically correct and what's going to offend people and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, we need to be caught up in what the word says, not about being concerned about what people are, who are going to be offended. I mean, yeah, we want to speak the truth in love, but at the end of the day, we got to answer to God, right? Amen? Amen? we got to answer to God. Even if you've been following God, but you just deviate from what God told you to do, it can cause a world of problems. You look at David and Goliath. If David would have tried to fight Goliath with the sword in just a, a traditional type of way, he would have had some problems. If he would have went out there in his own strength, you know, he, he would have had problems like, you know, getting everything on the army. He couldn't really move around with it. You know, he probably would have been dragging stuff, trying to, you know, it could have been real sloppy. I mean, it's important for us to do things God's way to make sure that the public opinion is not dictating what we believe, what we say, and what we do. Amen? Amen. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. So we got to realize where our help comes from. My God created the earth. Look at his work, he's amazing. Don't ever let a day go by where you do not praise him. Highly value who he is and everything he does. Make him your priority and worship him because he deserves it. He's awesome, he loves you very much. His word will not return him void, he has the perfect touch. He's my strength, he's my shield, he created mankind. My God is undefeated, yes he wins every time. He's bigger than every problem and stronger than every adversary. Praise him in the streets as well as inside of the sanctuary. He will never leave me, he will never forsake me.